My name is Ram Matu. I'm an associate professor here in the Department of Computer Science at Tulane. Uh, my research is at the intersection of algorithms, machine learning, and computational biology. And in particular, um, I work on problems in protein structure. So we look at uh, how, what the actual structure of proteins is, we look at how proteins interact, and we also look at what happens to a protein structure uh, when we make changes to it. The reason computation comes in uh, and is so important in the understanding and the study of protein structure is that proteins are really, really small. In fact, proteins are so small that we can't simply look at them under a microscope. We have to use techniques such as X-ray crystallography or nuclear magnetic resonance. And even when we use those techniques, we get somewhat noisy or uncertain information about the actual protein structure. And so where computation actually comes in is that there's the difficult problem of actually combining all these different sources of information and deciding what part of a structure is accurately resolved by which source of information. Uh, so computation sort of acts as the lens through which we sort of put all these sources of information and try to get one final accurate structure out. The reason proteins are so difficult to model uh, is because there are so many degrees of freedom in even one particular protein. And these degrees of freedom interact with one another and lead to combinatorially uh, difficult optimization problems. Um, so this means that we have to use techniques from algorithms and machine learning to actually uh, figure out what the sort of best conformation of a protein is. To give you an example of what I'm talking about in terms of the degrees of freedom, um, let me show you on the computer a model of uh, GP120, which is a um, envelope protein for HIV. So this is uh, the protein GP120, which is a part of the HIV virus, uh, bound to an, a human antibody. And so we try to understand how proteins like this one from a virus, uh, what their structure is, so that we can design therapies to kind of attack those proteins and to help uh, as a therapy for the disease. And if you've ever seen a protein, you've typically seen these sort of cartoon diagrams. But in reality, these proteins are much more complicated in terms of their degrees of freedom when we look at all of the atoms uh, shown. Uh, what we can see here is there are lots and lots of atoms uh, connected together with covalent bonds. And they all have individual degrees of freedom. And these degrees of freedom all work together to define the protein structure. And that structure is defined by all of the forces around the protein. And in our work, we use knowledge of those forces along with experimental data in a computational framework um, that's based in a combinatorial optimization of machine learning to try and figure out what the most likely positioning of the atoms is given all the different sources of data. Solving these computational problems actually can give us insight into the behavior of individual proteins. Um, protein design can help us understand what factors uh, keep a protein stable. Um, and understanding and modeling the immune response help us understand what parts of the protein are susceptible or useful for designing therapies. So in this way, computational approaches are a really useful part of the set of tools that biologists can use to uh, understand proteins. So hopefully I've uh, shown you that computational methods are really important in the understanding of protein structure and function. And I think this type of research fits in well with the theme of our department, which is to do research at the interface of computer science and other disciplines. Um, thank you for your attention.